Let's say you are pissed off with the government. What is the first thing you do? You start pouring your hate speech. Imagine tomorrow you start expressing your anger against some government policy that you didn't like. That's it. You are done. Rat or rat, you won't be able to travel. You won't be able to do shopping. Forget all the luxuries. You won't be able to buy food. The central bank can block your specific transaction in just one click. Rat or rat. That is the topic I'm discussing today. Digital currency. What is the maximum level of digital transaction have you made? Net banking, NEFT, or digital wallets like phone pay, Google pay, right? What if I told you a fruit seller in Mumbai is even more digital than you? Jiha, you heard it right. Meet Lal Sahani, a 45 year old fruit seller near RBI headquarters who uses e rupee, also known as digital rupee. The Reserve Bank of India chose him as part of the pilot project to experiment the practical use of digital currency. RBI even opened an account for him so that every time he has a transaction, he gets a notification in his phone. Sounds cool, right? No. Here is where it gets done. The central bank will have complete control of the flow of transactions. The central bank can dictate what you do with your hard-earned money. Is it really that evil as it sounds? I went through RBI's 50-page policy document and also did in-depth research about this topic. I'm going to explain in detail about the concept of digital currency. Let's get deep into the depth of privacy in this analysis. First of all, let's understand what is so digital about this digital rupee. Aren't you already using digital transactions? Crores and crores of money is in the transaction process every single day and the system has not broken. You can transfer money instantly with the help of UPI. When was the last time you carried 50,000 in cash? You can sit in one place and just send it instantly. You don't see any problem with the system, right? But the central bank sees a big problem. Why are they fixing a problem that is not even broken? That's where control comes into play. Right now what happens in the banking system is RBI gives money to the banks and keeps a ledger of this. The banks maintain everything about your account in their own ledger. All your transaction details are stored in bank's ledger. RBI doesn't have any power over this entire process. If you screw up with the government and in case the government wants to block your money flow, they will have to reach out to your bank and freeze the entire account. But RBI doesn't have direct control over this transaction. What if RBI skips the whole drama and keeps all the control with them instead of giving it to the banks? That's why they need a system where everything is in their control. It is called the Central Bank Digital Currency or CBDC. E-Rupee is a programmable money, meaning it is like cryptocurrency written in codes using blockchain technology. There is no need for paper money. Everything is digital and all you need is your mobile phone and internet connection. In the future, you don't even need banks. Now let's look at the process of transaction. RBI issues digital currency, which is CBDC. And it comes to the second or third party stakeholders, which is at present your bank. Then it comes to the end user, that is you, the consumer of currency. Earlier, the ledger was maintained and owned by your bank. But now RBI is the primary owner of the ledger and your bank will be the secondary owner of the ledger. Basically, banks will not have any power about this ledger. RBI sits in one place and controls the whole flow, including tracking of your transactions. That's the whole concept behind the sovereign power of the central bank. By this time, you might be wondering, how does this system work? Can you show me the process? Let's say you want to make a token payment in a shop. Step one, the shop owner will show you the QR code or SMS string from their mobile phone. Step two, you can scan the QR code that merchant shows. Now enter the amount you want to pay the merchant and click on the validate voucher button. Step three, merchant will receive a code in their mobile phone. Now add the six digit code merchant shares with you and then click on the proceed. There you go, your payment is successful. This voucher generated can be redeemed only once. If you lose your mobile phone, you can restore it later like how you can restore WhatsApp messages in your phone. First question you will get from this entire process is what is the difference between this and already using UPI? For common people like you and me, there is no difference at all. But in the back end, there's a gigantic difference. In UPI, what happens is, like I mentioned, ledgers are maintained by the banks. But in this digital rupee, ledger 
and the codes are maintained by the RBI. Now, what are the good things about CBDC? Number one is cost of printing money. The whole argument of RBI in this document is all about how costly it is to print, transport, store and maintain the paper money notes. The total expenditure of printing money last year was 4,984.80 crores. This cost can be reduced if we move to digital. The next big advantage is cross-border transactions. This is one of the biggest benefits of digital rupee. If at all e-rupee is going to be a revolutionary, it should be cross-border transactions. As per the World Bank, India is the world's largest recipient of remittances. India received $87 billion in 2021 with United States being the biggest source. 20% of foreign payments come from the United States. The next big advantage is geopolitics. There is a big project going on which is called Bridge Project. Countries like China, Hong Kong, UAE and Thailand. These central banks are collaborating on the multiple central bank digital currency also called as MCBDC. This is basically to have smooth business and transactions between these countries. There is also another project called Project Dunbar that brings together the Reserve Bank of Australia, Nigeria, Malaysia, Singapore and South Africa. CBDC basically helps to have a better geopolitical relationship. The next advantage is no banks needed in the future. If done well in the next 8 to 10 years, the RBI can completely eliminate the private banking system and completely control the finance system. Now let's look at the most important segment of this video which is the risks or disadvantages of CBDC. Number one is control of citizens. China has this system already. They have linked it to the social credit system. If the citizens of China mess with the government, it affects their credit scores and eventually government can freeze their transactions. When people fear, it gives the government more control and people will obey the government. This is what going to happen with the introduction of CBDC and the democracy in India. Sorry, there is no democracy. I meant in the script. What I meant to say is your freedom is dead. Number two is cyber security. This is another biggest threat to CBDC. First of all, these codes are written by human beings. Mostly they are Indian developers, right? So, you know, this will create a new set of jobs for cyber frauds. Hacking will be unbelievably big as there won't be any bank cash. Hackers will invest more in cracking these codes. Think about it. No matter how strong your system is, there will always be somebody who will be better than you at cracking the codes. If somebody hacks into the system, rat or rat, all the money is gone. Not just money. All your private data, all your personal data will be stored in these data centers. If at all anything leaks, it poses risk to your personal data. The next problem is cost of storage. Well, the RBI is talking about saving money on the print, but the cost of storage is more expensive than the print. I still like the paper prints. Let me explain why. When the RBI prints the money, it sends to the system, transportation to the banks and from banks to ATM machines, from there to the customers. Once the money goes out of the RBI system, different people will manage. So RBI doesn't have to worry so much about management. It is mostly safe and people are not that careless to let the cash get destroyed, right? Once it goes digital from print, right? The RBI has to store the data of each and every step of the transaction. Data centers are not cheap. They are very expensive and consume gigantic amounts of electricity. This leads to the next problem, which is zero downtime. The data servers must be and must be up all the time, 24 seven. If servers are down for a few hours, the whole economy goes crazy. Think about it. The current system is not so bad. If a bank servers are down, they will be up in few hours, max one day, right? And also it doesn't affect the economy because it is just one bank and for a limited time. If RBI servers are down, the whole system collapses. RBI should have an extremely robust backend system with all the time power backup. The next problem is offline facilities. At this stage, you need to have a mobile phone and internet access to make token redemptions. In India, out of 1.4 billion population, just 
825 million people have internet access. This is the overall internet access. Many people in rural areas do not even know how to operate mobile phone. RBI is actually working on the offline features for CBDC currency. RBI is mainly looking for other countries for experiments to get some sort of inspiration. One such example is Japan. Bank of Japan has actually published a research paper exploring chips on SIM card. Installing chips. This is really dark. It is literally tracking you with every move. I hope they don't go with this option. The next problem is geopolitics. Like I mentioned in the benefits, geopolitics is one of the biggest reasons why this CBDC is coming into the practice. In the future, it will create tensions between nations who take sides of CBDC. It will also affect how the new world order operates. It's like this. When countries come together for meeting, right, to have a huddle, one country will say, this is my new plan. Other guy will say, will your citizens cooperate? You can respond and say that they have to. They don't have other options. I can control their entire transactions. Well, I gave you both pros and cons of CBDC, but unfortunately, the negative sides are heavier than the positive sides about this revolutionary currency system. Apart from controlling and tracking people, I don't see any necessity of going digital about this currency. Before I end this video, I want to say one thing. Raat or raat. Rat or rat, your privacy and your freedom will be taken. What will you do? There's nothing you can do about CBDC, whether you like it or not, you will be forced to use it anyway. But you can do two things at this stage. One is express your opinions in the comments below. And the second is to support this channel by subscribing. Hit the subscribe button and I will see you in the next video.